Good morning. Welcome to Lemonade Meditation. Good morning. People are starting to file in. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Tell me your name again. Betty from right. Roseville. From Roseville, yes. Tom, I'm in St. Louis Park. Ah, yes. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Hi, I'm Connie from St. Paul. Hi, Connie. Good to see you again. See you. You're, you're becoming a regular, Connie. I am, as long, yep, as long as it works, and what else would I be doing? So <laughs> it's a good thing to be doing on a Saturday morning. All right. Hi, good morning. Andy from Bloomington. Hi, Andy from Bloomington. Good to have you with us. Is this your first time? No, it's okay. uh, second. All right, welcome back. Thank you. Well, this, of course, oh, go ahead. Stephanie from Edina. Stephanie from Edina. Welcome yeah. back, Stephanie. Um, thank you. Good to have you with us. Thanks, likewise. Well, this is our weekly lemonade meditation. Uh, I'll be leading the meditation this morning. Nate, any announcements before we dive in? Mostly that it's a beautiful day outside. And, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I'm very excited to, uh, to be with you all today. And, um, and if, things, if we do have any technical glitches, if you do get kicked off, just click the link and you'll be able to come right back in. Um, and Tom will lead today, but we'll reserve the last 10 minutes or so for us to talk about things, process things, and we'll probably have everyone on mute during the meditation. But then when you want to speak up at the end, you can unmute yourself. Those are the only logistical things I'm thinking of, Tom. Perfect. I, I had that the same thought about the weather. We might have some competition, stiff competition. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh. Great dedication to, uh, to stay indoors. Well, so today I'll be leading us through what I call um, the Sea of Compassion, S-E-A, like, like the ocean. So um, just like with any other instruction, I always think of um, the uh, comparison to yoga with this. Yoga instructors, besides always saying namaste, they also say, take care of yourself, you know, adapt what we're doing to your body or your body of the day. So if, if um, an ocean uh, metaphor doesn't work for you, you know, just use something that does work for you. And, and that goes for any instruction. It's just an offering, just a suggestion. And take, so take care of yourself, of course, is the top, um, the most important thing. So finding a uh, comfortable, um, seated position, or uh, it could be lying down, but in a place that feels supported. If it's available and comfortable, having the spine as erect. Now, not in a in a tense way, but in a um, we sometimes say dignified way. And um, this is an instruction that comes from all kinds of traditions. So when I hear instructions like this that are from you know, East and West, uh, and they're thousands and thousands and thousands of years old, I tend to think there must be something to it. So the idea is that our spine is our central channel that connects us with the earth and the sky. And um, to have it to be not Again, not in a tense way, but in an, an upright way uh, brings more benefit to ourselves and to others. So finding that position that's both comfortable and alert, inviting and allowing the body and the breath to settle, and, and just noticing for a few moments 
without changing it as best you can, what it's like to be breathing in this moment. And as you do this, you might notice your eyes want to close fully or partially. And just following that impulse if it's there. Inviting and allowing the body and the breath to settle and just following the breath. Not changing it, but noticing it, waking up to it, particularly perhaps the out breath. Deep, relaxing breaths. Noticing that that rhythm is similar to the rhythm of the sea. When we're at the beach, we notice waves crash in, waves Crash out. It's as though our breath were gentle waves coming in and coming out. Tides come in and tides come out. And same with our breath. Waves can nourish, waves can soothe. Just as our breath nourishes us and soothes us. And as you continue to breathe easily and naturally, if it's comfortable and available, perhaps placing one or two hands on your heart or somewhere else on your body that feels soothing in this moment, and allowing whatever it is you're grateful for to just arise there deeply in your heart and emanate out in all directions. This is very soft, nothing is forced here, just gently inviting in. What am I thankful for in this moment? And allow that to fully sink into the whole heart and from there emanate out in all directions, above and below, in front and in back, and the sides, and everything in between. And you might leave your hands where they are, or you can uh, let them rest in another position if that's more comfortable, or perhaps you'll come back to hands on the heart or wherever they are here and there. Just follow your own instinct. Also allowing the breathing to find its own natural rhythm now. If it's comfortable, allowing yourself to be gently rocked and caressed by the rhythm of the breath, just as the body might be in a gentle sea, in a calm, beautiful day, there's still movement in the ocean and our bodies are soothed and nourished by these natural elements.
attention, focusing your attention next, if this is comfortable, on the in-breath only. Allowing yourself and inviting yourself to savor the sensation of breathing in. One breath after another. Perhaps noticing how the in-breath energizes the body. Perhaps breathing in kindness and compassion for yourself on the in-breath. Just as our hand on our body reminds us that we're not just bringing awareness here, but we're bringing tender, loving awareness. Imagine the breath doing that as it brings air into the lungs. Or if you prefer allowing some kind of word or image or phrase of kindness, letting that ride in on the in-breath. And in your own time, when and if you're ready, just letting that fade very softly, very gently, shifting your, your attention to the out breath now. Feeling your body breathe out. Really noticing, relishing in the ease of natural exhalation. Out breath after out breath. Full attention as best you can in this moment there. Your attention may wander as we go and whenever that happens, just gently acknowledging that that is what has happened and guide it back very gently. For now, we're focusing on the sensation of the exhalation. And now, if you like, calling to mind someone whom you love or someone who might be struggling and perhaps needs compassion. And visualize that person you love or who might need compassion. Visualize that person as clearly in your mind as you can. Again, without forcing or struggling, this is a very gentle prompt. Just bring them to you, invite them to you. And perhaps use any other senses in your memory of this person, the touch that might be involved or aromas or sound of their voice. And begin directing your out breath to this person offering the ease of breathing out. Offering compassion to this loved one or this person who might be struggling. Wishing them ease, sending them kindness and compassion with each out breath, one after the other. And if for any reason it's easier for you, you might breathe out to others in general rather than a particular person, whatever works for you. Just breathing out kindness and compassion to another person or persons.
And when and if you're ready, allowing this to just gently fade away in your mind's eye. Focusing again on the sensation of breathing both in and out. And just savoring that sensation of breathing it alone. Just fully with the sensation in your body as you breathe in as best you can. And fully with the sensation of breathing out as best you can in this moment. Just the breath. Just the breath in the body. Just as the waves crash in and out. Just as tides move in and out without our effort, so the breath comes and goes. bathed by a sea of compassion. And then if you like, beginning to breathe in for yourself and breathe out for that other person who came to you before or persons in compassion and kindness for me and out kindness and compassion for you. One for me. One for you. Drawing kindness and compassion in for yourself on the in-breath. Sending something good out to another on the out-breath. Just as waves wash over us as they come in and out, so as we breathe, compassion and kindness washes over us on the in-breath and then we offer that kindness and compassion or something else, whatever words or phrases or images might come to you, something good out to another or others on the out breath. Kindness and compassion or other good things come to you on the in-breath. Wash over your whole being, penetrating every single cell deeply into your body. And on the out-breath, similarly, kindness, compassion, or other good things Wash over that beloved other person or persons who might be struggling or in need of some kind of assistant or compassion on the out breath. Penetrating deep into their bodies. A wash in kindness and compassion. And feeling free at this time to adjust the balance between breathing in and out. 
based on your particular situation or need in this moment, perhaps two breaths in for you and one out for the other. Or perhaps one breath in for you and three out for the other, or just whatever your body and psyche needs right now. Playing with that balance. Or perhaps that equal flow works well for you in this moment. Just adjusting to your current need, current situation. Breathing in kindness or compassion for yourself, just like waves wash over you. Breathing out kindness and compassion and other good things to others on the out breath in whatever proportion. Releasing any unnecessary effort. Aware of any distractions. Just gently guiding yourself back over and over again to wherever you are, wherever we are, perhaps the sound of my voice. And allowing this meditation to be as easy as breathing itself. Kindness and compassion for the self on the in-breath. Or perhaps you replace those words or phrases with something that better fits your current need. Perhaps it's self-compassion, perhaps it's acceptance, perhaps patience, equanimity whatever it is you feel that you might need more of, allowing the essence of that concept or word to come into you just like waves wash over you in a beautiful calm sea, gently caressed. Similarly on the out breath, whatever the proportion is, offering words of compassion, kindness, or whatever you sense the other person or persons might need. What might be most useful for that person or persons? Just as waves wash over others, on the out breath, we offer these kindnesses, these words, these concepts freely. We're both filled we both receive and we offer to others and we give. Allowing the breath 
and this sea of compassion to flow in and out. Just like the ocean goes in and out. Much like the tides come in and out. A limitless, boundless, endless flow, restoring our resilience. filling us with what it is we need so that we may offer to others. And allow yourself to be part of this limitless, boundless, endless flow. Allow yourself to be this sea of compassion. And then when you're ready, just allowing this part of the activity to gently, gently fade away. See if you can return to sensations of the breath itself alone. And see if you can notice any difference, if there is any, between what that was like when we started And what's it like to just tune into the sensations of the breath and the body now as you breathe in? And as you breathe out. We'll take a few cycles of that in and out, just noticing the quality of the breath and the body now as compared to earlier. And then allowing this to just dissolve away gently, easily. When you're ready, inviting the chin to drop very, very gently and slowly toward the chest, slowly fluttering the eyes open and returning to the world of color and sound. So as Nate mentioned, we reserved the final 10 minutes or so for discussion, fellowship, any um, 
responses, reactions to that activity, and or perhaps commenting on how you're noticing you are being self-compassionate with yourself in these times and how you're noticing others be compassionate or any acts of compassion toward others or that you've noticed kindnesses of others. It could be to yourself or to others that have inspired you. Does that, make, that makes sense? And just unmute yourself if you'd like to share anything. That was really lovely. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Will you tell us your first name again? Trish. Hi, Trish. Um, Go ahead. Um, I found myself, I'm, I learned in yoga to do something called an ujjayi breath. I believe that's how you say it. Um, and it kind of sounds like the ocean. Um, you put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and you kind of create some sort of sound in the back of your throat when you're breathing and that really resonated well for this meditation nice so you used that i did i did nice uh, when my mind started to wander okay. and that was helpful for me do you remember what the yoga instructor said was the benefit of that breath i don't I asked because I can't remember. I, I, <laughs> I think you did pronounce it right. Ujjayi, I think, I think that's Ujjayi. right. Yeah. And it's, um, if anybody wants to try it, right? So yeah, tongue at the roof of the mouth, and then it's just making a sound kind of in the throat, right? Like, mm -hmm. see if I can do it. Yeah, and if your lips are closed, it's you hear it in a different way too. Let's try it that way. Yeah, it totally sounds like snorkeling to me. <laughs> I've not scuba dived. I don't know what that sounds like, but definitely snorkel. Yeah, that fits very well. I wish I could remember the benefit. I have, I've definitely tried it and heard of it. Yeah, I don't know what either. Anybody? Anybody a yoga, a yogi? I'll see if I can uh, research it and, uh, and we'll talk about it next week maybe. I have no idea how to spell it, but I learned it from yoga with Adrian. Locally in Minneapolis area? No, she has a YouTube channel. Uh-huh. I'll quickly say that I've been doing a lot of work with burnout and compassion fatigue with uh, helping professionals. So therapists and medical personnel and teachers and daycare workers and social workers um, and getting into the literature and really the best thing you can do for burnout recovery or healing from compassion fatigue is that compassion, being able to receive that from others, but also direct that back toward yourself. So I was really appreciating this today, Tom, on multiple levels, just thinking about myself, but also a number of the people that I'm working with individually or in, in small groups that are struggling with burnout and compassion fatigue and, and kind of fantasizing about you doing this with some of the people that I'm working with. Would love that. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, caregivers are um, struggling because the demand is so high right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. this would be a, quite a gift for them. Thanks for that. This is Kristen. And, um, this is my first time with y'all, but um, I found it helpful, this is very, very helpful, but I found it helpful to just hold myself. At first I was putting my hands here, but because we can't hug each other, yeah. and there are people in my life right now that really need hugs. Yeah. It, it felt really good 
and sometimes I feel like I'm splitting apart. So I feel really good. Yeah, nice, beautiful. I'm so glad you discovered that in this. That's really beautiful. I see several of us are trying this. <laughs> uh, imagining who might be holding us, you know, whether it's God or or, yeah. or our loved one or our parent or something, or who we might be holding that we would like to hold that really helped me. But it also brought a lot of tears as well. Of course, that's one of the things I miss most. <sighs> Hugging my friends, my family, ah, oh, it hurts. And I really appreciate hearing the emotion in your voice, Kristen. That's really, yeah. really beneficial to me. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a therapist as well, and I that compassion fatigue comment. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a hard day yesterday, and and um. People are getting tired of it, you know, so their their anxiety's up, and and I found myself <laughs> maybe I guess impatient with that. It's like, oh, but also just so saddened by it all, you know. And so this is this is helpful. Yeah. Great. I'm glad you came, and I'll thank you. May as well let you know af right after this, Nate and I are talking about uh, creating some kind of mini retreat for probably for therapists, maybe for other caregivers at some point, but we'll probably start with, since that's what both we, he and I are, some kind of burnout prevention or maintenance, equanimity maintenance. We don't know, we're, we're just starting to talk about it, but, and who knows if we don't even have, no, no commitment, but we're on our radar to do something even more. Might have time for one or two more quick comments if anyone else would like to share about your experience with this today or how things are going, what you're noticing out there. Connie, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was. Um, this is a little bit um, different than the, the course of the other comments. I, I certainly really appreciated this um, meditation. Um, I was thinking um, about your original question about the kindnesses and one of the most remarkable things that's happened to me during this time is people from way, way, way in my past have emerged and taken the opportunity to find me on Facebook or whatever. And the really sweet part of it is every time there's a message about, and this is what you meant in my life at that time. And it's just a, you know, incredible thing for someone, you know, who I have had no contact with for more than 50 years to say, mm -hmm. I remember what you were like to me as a teenager and I was five. And this is how, you know, this is my memory of that. And, you know, for people to have the, some people um, to have the space and the time to do that, but actually carry out that kindness has been so significant to me. Wow. Now I want to know what you were like when you were five <laughs> or 15. <laughs> well, this woman actually sent me, I mean, I don't know what I was like either, but she sent me the picture of a book that I sent, that I gave to her um, when for her fifth birthday, a friend is someone who likes you, and inside was my very adolescent signature. And she said, uh, she kept it on her end table all this time. Wow, uh, you know, I mean, it's just it's just remarkable the little pieces of memory that we carry and what brings them forward. And that really is well, it, and we we do have less than one minute, so we're probably going to get booted off here in a moment. But thank you for sharing that, Connie. And, yeah. and I'm quite excited about next week. We're going to be doing uh, one of the things that I enjoy most that my students actually ask for the most in a, a meditation. We do it once each term. Um, so I'm looking forward to next week um, and maybe having many of you back for, for that. In our last 12 seconds, Tom, do you have anything you want to add? Just again, to invite people as we go out to...